Hello, today is Monday, June 15th, 2020. You're listening to the Sport Talk with Zach Mason. My name is Zach Mason, and today we got a few topics to talk about. Um, I got NBA, local sports. Yeah. And uh, a little bit of advertisement, you know. I'll get to that in a second. And... We got a couple of big topics. One is um, Northwest Florida Daily News. I saw an article where the FHSAA has passed a six-quarter rule. What, What this rule is basically is you have six quarters in a week. There's four quarters in a game. This is for football, obviously. Four quarters in a game. You can have people who play JV play either two quarters of that game or the that whole game, and then they could go and play varsity. So, like, say I had a 10th grader who I thought could play varsity potentially. So they could have two quarters of varsity that Friday. Or they could have two quarters of our, or JV, three quarters of JV, three quarters of RC. However you want it, however the coaches decide to do it, that's the rule. And that's it was actually pretty heavily voted. And I think it's a very, very good thing for not only young players but the varsity team as well because it just gives more depth to that team. I know especially at Baker we were a one eight team, so we didn't really have much depth. We only had. 30, 40 kids on the varsity team, and then JV had so many because there were so many new uh, players coming in from middle school that we just had so many on JV that once JV season ended and we were getting ready to go into playoffs, we'd have 15, 10, 15 kids from JV come and play for varsity, come dress out for varsity just to give us more depth just in case we needed them in that position. If we were in that position, then we would obviously put them in and they would. Brunson at Baker, we kind of ran the same offense for JV and varsity in a a way. Just varsity is more a little bit more in depth and they have more play calls and all that kind of stuff. But I think that it, I'm just going off of Baker, but I think that it'll be good for Baker because they kind of, they've already been familiar with that offense. So once they move up to varsity, they kind of know the blocking scheme, know the running scheme, know the um, how varsity is kind of going with it and how JV already knows what everything's going like everything that's going on and they know what to do. They're just not used to the varsity playing time. But I think it'll also help with um like if they go and play varsity, they'll they'll be playing at the highest level that they can play at that school, obviously. So whenever they go back to JV that next week, on whether it be Tuesday or Thursday or Monday or whatever day they play that game, they'll already have experience from the varsity game. So they're like, oh, I'm playing a JV game. This ain't going to be nothing. And they'll be ready, and I think it'll improve the JV teams as well just with varsity experience so they'll be able to give the JV team more to offer. And not only will that help Baker, but that will help a lot of teams, obviously, just because everybody who doesn't want depth on their team. I mean, I think it'll help a lot of people. I think it'll help. Um, it'll help Crestview this year, for sure, because they they lost a lot of uh, seniors. They lost a lot of seniors 2018. They lost a lot of seniors this year, and they're a very young team that's coming up. And they were a young team last year, but I mean. They've had that experience, but at the end of the day, you always you always want depth on a team. And whether I don't know if there's any restrictions to how many people you can move up, but it obviously can't be that many because you can't just play half the team for two quarters and then you wouldn't be very successful. But um, like you can't just play half a JV team for two quarters and then expect to play them for the rest of, for four quarters on Friday. But I mean, we'll see how it goes. We I'm actually pretty familiar with this um rule because I lived in Indiana my freshman year and I played football up there. I'd moved to Indiana just for a family reason. 
and we had played up there and they actually had this rule so I I was originally on JV and then I eventually moved up to varsity full-time but whenever I was still on JV I was we were doing the six quarter rule where where um we it was me and a f- couple other players that would be doing this rule and we'd play like we played like three quarters i think like we were eligible for three quarters that friday so <clears throat> we played three quarters on varsity like it would especially help if we were like in a blowout win we'd just play the first three quarters of the first half and then we'd be eligible for Friday and we'd be ready to go. And I don't know <clears throat> what they would consider a quarter if you have to play like a certain amount of plays or be in there for a certain amount of time, but I guess we'll see. If you want to go read the full article, it's on Northwest Florida Daily News. And the article's up there in the sports section, and it goes a little bit more in depth and it has what coaches think about it and stuff. And I saw that Coach Hatton and Coach Thompson, um, Coach Thompson, Coach Thompson from Niceville, Hatton from Crestview, they said that um, it was a great thing, and they, they approved it, and they said it would be a lot of good experience for the young guys. Also, another thing, it'll be, like I just said, it'll be great experience for the younger players so that when they do are, are eligible for varsity that full-time, then they'll already know what's going on, and I think that'll help a lot of teams in the long run because, like everybody knows, whenever you have a young team, incoming juniors you they're not used to like varsity and how things go around there unless they had moved up from JV the year before and I think I think we'll see a lot better football in the coming years I think we'll see a lot better play and I think I'm very excited to see where this goes on to the next one the first week of sports especially football first week of summer workouts is complete as of this is starting week two today, and I I haven't talked to any of the coaches. I had planned on talking to Brunson, not interview, just texting him to see how everything goes. But as far as I know, I think I think the things are going pretty well. I haven't heard anything bad or anything. Then again, they might not. They might try to keep that private just for privacy reasons. But I mean, at the end of the day, I think. I think what we started, what they came to an agreement to, what uh, Mark Chambers kind of agreed on is I think that it's going well. I think it's going to be going well for a long time, and I think we'll be able to see regular football here in the uh, next couple months whenever the season starts. Another big question is going to be when, what is the team? what are the teams going to look like come – like kickoff classic, the first game, week one, week two, when even if they had summer workouts, the beginning weeks, the first three, four weeks are gonna are hard enough regardless. I know whenever I was playing, like especially when I first moved up to varsity, I had, we were playing in the first few weeks everybody was cramping up and I mean it was it wasn't just linemen, it was uh receivers, quarterbacks running backs, everybody was cramping up because if you live in Florida, you understand the heat and the humidity and it, how that gets to the body, especially you would understand it during summer workouts. But during a game situation, it's just a completely different atmosphere. Like I remember uh, at Baker, we'd always have a – I can't remember what the what it is, but you basically smell it and it clears up your sinuses. It's legal, obviously, but, I mean, I can't. I can't, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, All right, it'll come to me later. But I think, I think this is going very well. I think it's going to be going very well for a long time. I don't think we'll see any issues because, as far as I know, they're following the CDC guidelines, and I think that this is the start of something very, very special. In order to get back to some form of normalcy, like I keep repeating over and over again. And I think that I think that we're gonna we're gonna be able to watch live sports again come this fall, and I'm very excited for it. I'm gonna break from sports for a second. If you haven't seen my shirt, you can't really see it because <laughs> the camera's kind of cut off. But I have 
not I'm not gonna call it merch by no means because this is not merch me and my mom made this I love my mom for those of you who know my mom she's a very hard-working woman and I love her to death and we spent a couple hours just trying to figure out to make these shirts and I want to do something not only to advertise myself but just to give you all something more than just something to listen to I guess just something to wear but I'm gonna do something I'll show you the shirt first all right this is this is the front it's just the plain plain old shirt the sport talk with Zach Mason so you can see that right there and then we got my logo on the back if you put two and two together that is my logo that you've probably seen everywhere if you've followed me at all but I want to do something I want to I want to just like I said get my name out there and try to advertise as much as I can because at the end of the day this is me starting something that I want to do for the rest of my life and I gotta start off big like I literally I've bought and bought and I've bought I have this sitting behind me I've literally have bought like three of these already just because I keep thinking the, that one's not right and I have notes questions I want to ask people what I want to talk about although it may not sound like I know what I'm talking about most of the time but I do try to prepare the best I can I sit here and I look through articles upon articles just seeing what I can talk about you know I always have the Northwest Florida Daily News I always have ESPN going I have the ESPN app on my phone I always have something sports related to talk about or at least want to talk about and I think that let me get back to my lighting here sorry still learning sorry but I think that me doing this is gonna be good for me and this is gonna be just a limited time thing I'm gonna see how it goes and see what see what the reaction is from you guys but I want to these shirts I want to make and I want to give them to you guys for free. I want to see what happens. I want to see what I can do. I don't want to get overwhelmed by how many got how many people want shirts, but at the same time, I would not hurt my feelings if nobody got a shirt because it's just something that I was kind of I'm I'm kind of proud of. I just I have a name. I have my name on my shirt, and I just I I think it's pretty cool because. I didn't think that I would get so much support from people. I didn't think that I would get a lot of like feedback, such positive feedback from everybody. I've had so many people, so many of my buddies just text me like, hey, I'm like, they're talking to me like they're so proud of me and they just want me to keep going. And I've had a, a lot of few people that I've played with or I knew that were former players that want to be on the show and just want to talk sports just just in general and I could ask them some questions and I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty close to narrowing down who I want to start out with and I'll let the people know soon enough but I think that me doing this sorry I think me doing this is something that I could do good for the world the world I don't know if you guys could tell, but I've put a lot of effort into what I'm doing. I've put a lot of effort into my equipment, as you can see with what you're watching me on. I've put a lot of effort into it. I've gotten monitors. I've gotten this backdrop. It's not much. It's literally, I'm going to be honest with you, it's a movie screen. It, it's a projector screen. Like, I don't want to do it because I don't want to mess it up. I'm scared to mess it up. But... I mean, I just I just wanted to start big and I just wanted to create. I've always ever since I was little, I've always wanted to be a creator. I remember I would sit there and just want to create Minecraft videos all the time. I was such a big Minecrafter. I oh my goodness. I would always watch people make YouTube videos and I just wanted to sit there and be a creator. And I always I always loved YouTube. I always loved the thought of YouTube just being just expressing yourself and expressing what you wanted to talk about. And I think that it's very good for people, but it's also, it can also be bad for people. But that's just if you get into the wrong crowd and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, I think what I'm doing is kind of 
for me. And I feel like I have good people around me and I have a good support system and I have good people who have good intentions that are trying to help me out. And I think that I think that I could actually do something with this. Other words, otherwise I wouldn't be I wouldn't be doing this right now. I wouldn't be talking to you guys face to face on this camera. You guys looking on the screen, you guys wouldn't be watching with me. You're watching me if you didn't think I was authentic. And I think I just want to thank you guys a lot. You guys are I didn't think I was going to get this much support. I just thought I was going to get like 20 views a video. But I mean, I I just can't thank you guys enough. You guys are awesome. And I know this is just a start and it's not really that big, but I feel like I could make it something big. Like I could go beyond just Northwest Florida. I could be I could be something more than what I what I'm setting out right now. And okay. Besides that, I'm I'm going to tell you guys how you can get a free shirt Sport Talk with Zach Mason first official merch, I guess you could say. I'm just going to call it my t-shirt. All right. You have three options. I don't remember. Sorry. Three options, all right? You can do it through Instagram, through Twitter, or through Facebook, all right? I'm going to scoot over to the side, and I'm going to try my best to edit this video to where I can get my names here, because I'm not the best at editing. editing. The only thing I know how to do is cut, as of right now, but I'm sure I could add something. I'm going to be up very late editing this video, so I can get it out to you guys, and I'm, yeah, all right. So this is what I want to do. Three options, like I said. The first one, first option, Instagram. My Instagram is going to be right right here. Somewhere in this area, I'll have a list. All right. You're going to go to my Instagram. You're going to look at the post. that I. It's on my Instagram right now. I'm uploading this video at 12 o'clock Monday. 12 o'clock. June 15th, okay, June 15th at 12 o'clock, there will be a post on my Instagram, sport, at Sport Talk with Zach Mason, you're going to share that post to your story, and you're going to mention me, at Sport Talk with Zach Mason, and then you're going to comment on that post, your shirt size, if you don't feel comfortable putting your shirt size in the comments, you can DM me. Okay? That's the first option. Like I said, post it to your story and mention me and comment your shirt size or DM me your shirt size. And I'll make sure to make a list. I will have a list of people who I need to make shirts for, who I need to send out to. And if if you get if you are gonna get a shirt, then I will message you back, I will DM you, I will do whatever I have to do just to make sure you know that you have a shirt unless you want to change your size or anything like that. Second option, Facebook. You go to my Facebook page, at Sport Talk with Zach Mason. Alright? It's very simple. Just go to Facebook.com slash Facebook.com slash Sport Talk with Zach Mason. You're gonna, I'm going to post this video that you're watching right now it's gonna be on Facebook you're gonna share that post you're gonna share the video from my page and then you're gonna comment your shirt size I don't I don't prefer you guys messaging me on Facebook because I'm not the best at che checking those so I would rather you comment your shirt size on Facebook and that's the second option the third option is my Twitter I know I haven't really promoted it much, but I guess I'm promoting it now. My Twitter, at Sport Talk with ZM. Not Zach Mason, at Sport Talk with ZM. It'll be right here, somewhere right here. I'm going to post a picture of the thumbnail of this video. It will be on my Twitter. All right. You're going to retweet that, and you're going to retweet it with a comment commenting your shirt size 
So you know how you go to retweet, you press retweet, and it either says retweet or retweet with comment, I'm pretty sure, or quote retweet or something like that. You're going to quote retweet your shirt size. And you have to follow me on all of these all of these accounts. Alright? You have to make sure you're followed on all of them. You have to share the post and comment the post. Basically for all three. Another thing, you can only get one shirt, guys. I can't I can't be making three hundred fifty to three hundred shirts, you know what I'm saying? So just do it for one person. Only one shirt, please. If you want to get a shirt for your dad or your mom or something like that, just have them go to Facebook. I'm sure most parents have Facebook. Most parents have Instagram. Some parents have Twitter. Parents are very into social media nowadays, so I'm sure they can find me. I'm sure they can get to it somehow, some way. And that is the rules. One more rule. You have to be subscribed to this channel. I had a hundred and some, a hundred and seventy views on my interview with Brunson. You know how many subscribers I have? Thirty-one. That don't add up. All right. So you have to make sure you're subscribed to this channel. All right. Subscribe to the channel on any of the social media. Share the post. Mention me. And comment your shirt size. It's very simple. And then you can get a shirt pretty much like this. It has a Sports Talk with Zach Mason on the front and then the logo on the back. I'll probably, it it may not be exactly like this, but it'll be the same font and the same logo. But I'm going to try to get different shirts. I'm going to try to get better quality shirts just for you guys, just so I know that I'm putting, I'm trying to put the best quality out as I can, not only in this video, but shirts as well. And just in general, I want to be, I want to make myself a brand. I want to I want to be a brand. I want to be a business. I want to be a podcast. I want to be a merch seller. I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be all kinds of stuff. And it all starts here. All right. Okay. So that's how you get the shirts. All right. Are we all clear? Good. All right. Cool. NBA. I'm sure a lot of you have heard especially on my last podcast, me talk about the NBA and how they're going to bring him back to Orlando on, or bring him in Orlando, 22 teams on January, January, July 31st in Orlando in a bubble. They cannot leave. They are quarantined. They're going to finish out the season, duke it out. Whoever wins, wins. Whether that with that's an asterisk by it. Personally, I don't think it's going to have an asterisk by it. But some people might for this point. So, I'm sure you, some of you have seen on social media that some of the players are thinking about opting out of the Orlando trip, which is completely fine. But in order for us to still have a season, an uh, NBA season, they're talking about having replacement players. I was watching the Pat McAfee show, the Pat McAfee show yesterday, and they were he was talking about he was like, if I gotta if I gotta suit up and heat check and drain a half court shot on the Lakers. Frank Vogel, give me a call. And I mean, I just thought it was funny, but he was obviously joking. But I mean, I think replacement players are going to be very interesting because you see people from the G League and people come straight out of high school or some late fourth round draft pick who just come out of nowhere and just like just like Kyle Kuzma. Nobody thought Kyle Kuzma was going to be anything. He was obviously going to be something, but, I mean, nobody thought he was going to be what he is now. And I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens um, with the replacement players. If they do end up deciding half the – or if they do ending up – if they do end up having to do – there we go. All right. It's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. But, I mean – I'm I'm kind of two-sided on this. One of them I'm kind of with the players on it because I understand you are in that you are in Orlando without your family for 40 days at least. At least 40 days. At least. And that I mean, yeah, we've been in quarantine for a while. 
and we've been in quarantine for, well, I mean, they've been quarantined since what, I think it was March 8th was when Rudy Gobert tested positive or something like that. I don't, I don't remember. I think it was March 8th. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I mean, you see that they're quarantined and yeah, we've been all going crazy in quarantine and I'm sure most families have been wanting to kill each other and choke each other out. But I mean, being, I mean, 40 days, that's a month and a half at least if you don't make the playoffs. 40 days is still a long time without your family. I mean, especially just having them back from an NBA season when they're on the road, going to play all these games and being on long road trips and not coming home for a while, it it's tough. And, I mean, I personally don't know because, obviously, I'm not an NBA player. I'm six foot one and 250 pounds. I'm nowhere near an NBA player. But, I mean, that's also one side of the story, and I can understand why players would be opting out because even if you do make a run at this thing <clears> – <throat> You would still have to, you know, like, you'd still be there for, I think it was 80-something 80, 80 days. And that's that's two and a half months, almost three months. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go without my family for almost three months. I mean, that's crazy, especially with the young NBA players. They have little babies. Who, you're going to leave your wife with your baby at home? I don't think so. So, obviously, it's tough for the NBA players because, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. That's just one side of it, <laughs> one side of it. And then my other side is, it at the end of the day, it's your job. That's why I'm two-sided because there's also the real life and there's, the real life side and then there's the pleasing everybody side and making things making things work side but i mean it is your job it is your you did sign a contract to play for that team and like damian lillard said he said if he doesn't have a real chance to play then he doesn't want to like if he doesn't have a real chance to make a run at at the championship, then he doesn't want to play. He doesn't want to put himself in that kind of situation. But then he also, he's obviously going to, obviously going to be there to be a team player. But I mean, at the same time, he also said that he feels like he could beat LeBron James and the Lakers, which I'm not going to say nothing, but so it's, it's a tough situation for them, obviously, but LeBron, I'm pretty sure LeBron said he's playing because he knows he's playing. <clears throat> and I saw Patrick Beverly, I think he put it on Instagram. It was either Instagram or Twitter. But he said, he said, if LeBron James and Anthony Davis are playing, by God, we're all playing. And I respect him for that because he says, we're not just going to, he's basically saying, we're not just going to give you a free shot at the championship. Whether if that means people are sitting out, people are being replaced by replacement players from the G League, D, D League, G League, college, I don't know, just random people off the street. They just walk outside in the streets of Orlando and just find a random person, you know. And it's a very tough situation, like I've said, because, like I said, there's you want to see your family. You don't want to be away from your family for 40 to 80 days. Or it's your job. You have to do your job. You have to go make your money. And that's also a very interesting thing because, like, NFL players, they get game checks. But what about NBA players? Like, how are they Are they going to get game checks? Are the replacement players going to get their game checks? Or are they just going to get a little supplement of it? I mean, it's very, it's very tough. It's very tough to see because... You just you just want at the end of the day we just want to watch NBA, <clears throat> and I don't think depending on who the player is I don't think we'll really mind, um, like seeing who it is. 
I don't think we'll really mind like seeing replacement replacement players. If it was like Giannis or LeBron or Damian Lillard, um, I don't. I think the ratings would go down. But it just depends on who doesn't who plays and who doesn't want to play, you know. And it's, I don't. I don't know. It's it's a tough situation, and we'll see how it plays out. And I think that's going to be it for all the time we got for today. Um, I think I, I just want to thank you guys for listening once again. I don't know why you listen, but thank you for the support. I appreciate it a lot. Sitting here, I have to look at my ugly behind, whether if that's on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you watch it. You got it saved to your camera roll. Somebody emailed you the video about, oh my God, watch this girl. Oh Lord. He's so, he's so not handsome because that's for show night. But you know, I might cut that out, but we'll see. But like I said, Facebook. Okay. Some of you may not know this. I have recently partnered up with Ken Nielsen with Crestview Community TV. And I'm going to be on his show on Crestview, uh, Crestview Community Television. I'll put it right here uh, on his Facebook page. You, and I'll make sure to put the link in the description below. He he has he just wanted me there. I called. I had given him a call a couple weeks ago. And I was like, hey, listen, I got your number. Somebody told me to call you. And I would really love to come on your show and talk sports with you. He said, And he was all about it. He said he wanted me to... He wanted to broadcast this show on his, uh, he wanted me to broadcast, like, YouTube and then put it back on his show. He wanted me to do some live in his studio. You may not see this white, beautiful white background, these lights on me. You may see me in an actual studio, which, that'll be insane. <laughs> and I'm very excited to see where that goes, but I just, Ken's obviously probably going to be listening to this, so Ken... I just wanted to thank you. You are awesome. And I can't thank you enough for the opportunity you've given me. And I'm also going to be doing play-by-play with Ken Nielsen at all the Krusty home games. So if you would like to, if you're either sick, you got the flu or something, you want, you still want to watch Krusty football, you got me. It may not be my face. But you'll be listening to my beautiful voice on Friday nights. Certain Friday nights that they have home games. I'll be doing play-by-play. I'll be doing commentary. I'll talk to you guys a little bit on Facebook. So I'll let you, I'll make sure to let you guys know um, what we got on Facebook when football season comes around. Because I will be for sure commentating and play-by-play for the Crestview home games. Thank you guys for watching. You guys are awesome. Be ready for Thursday or whenever. I will make sure to let you guys know on my social media. Make sure to check out my social media for the free shirt. Don't forget about the free shirt giveaway on my Instagram at Sport Talk with Zach Mason. On my Facebook at Sport Talk with Zach Mason. On my Twitter at Sport Talk with ZM. Make sure to go. Make sure, like I said, if you didn't remember, go rewind the video. Make sure to go listen to those rules for the giveaway for the free shirts. These three shirts are very nice. This one's personally nice. I kind of like it. <laughs> but that's just me. But make sure to check out my social medias for all updates on when I'm going to be posting next, when I'm going to be live, when I'm, whenever I'm going to be posting. Because it may not always be on YouTube, even though I'll try to be on YouTube as mo- most of the time. But make sure to always go check out that Facebook page, like I said, Crestview Community Television, for to listen to me. To listen to me in the studio, to listen to me in my beautiful voice or... Especially sometime this week, I will be interviewing Mark Chambers, the superintendent of Okaloosa County District Schools, and I'll be talking to him about um, how things are going with, uh, like I said, the sports coming back, the 11 to 2 uh, voting on the six quarter rule, like we talked about at the beginning of the podcast. And yeah, I'm very excited for that because Ken set me up with that, and I'm very excited because I didn't think this early I'd be talking to the superintendent of schools so I'm gonna make sure I get a lot of questions for him I'm gonna not try to bog him down with questions because I don't want to I want him to come back I want him to talk to me about sports because who else can say they've talked to their superintendent on a podcast about sports I mean 
me. And that's just crazy. So I wanted to thank Ken for that. And big shout out to all you guys. You guys are the reason why I'm here this early on. You guys are the reason why I get to talk sports every Monday and Thursday. 12 o'clock. Be there or be square. I'm going to try and end off this. <laughs> I'm going to try and end off this podcast as smoothly as possible without stuttering like I did there. Deck on it. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. This has been the Sports Talk with Zach Mason. Make sure you check out Thursday, Friday, or Wednesday whenever I get to talk to Mark Chambers. You're going to want to listen to that one because it'll be a lot more in depth and a lot more. It'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Just know that. All right. So I will talk to you guys next time. Thank you for listening. This has been the Sport Talk with Zach Mason on Monday, June 15th, 2020. It's been a crazy 2020, but I mean, we're going to get through it. We're already halfway. So let's just finish it out strong. Love you guys. Thank you. And talk to you later.